Coming into Miami, Florida. That's the destination for the Nets. The most feared man on the court with the ball in his hands. Kevin Durant simply cannot be stopped. He'll be leading the way for his team as they prepare to bring their heat to the American Airlines Arena. Nets Heat is coming up next, and we'll be right back. The 2K Sports Pregame Show. American Airlines Arena, the place, and the Miami Heat will be on their home floor as they go up against the Brooklyn Nets. Brooklyn looking very confident right now. They are putting together an impressive stretch of basketball. Only one loss in their last eight games. We'll see if that continues tonight. You know, right around this time of year, Kenny, the better teams tend to separate themselves a bit from the pack. A lot of the adjustments have now been made. Guys are taking each individual game a little bit more seriously, Ernie. Over the course of a long season, true talent generally wins out. That's what we're starting to see right now. And that about does it with tip-off fast approaching. Let's send it out to Kevin Harlan. Welcome everyone, it's time for NBA action, coming to you live on this Saturday night. Hi everyone, this is Kevin Harlan, and joining us tonight, Greg Anthony and Hall of Famer Doris Burke, and reporting from the sidelines, our very own David Aldridge. And taking a broader look here at the year-over-year -year scoring trend for Irving. And looking at his offensive numbers from the past few years, it, it seems like teams around the league have kind of figured him out. Uh, he's having to work a lot harder for his points, and they haven't been coming nearly as easily as they used to. So the next starting five, Jared Allen is out there with Durant. Then there's Spencer Dinwiddie. Then there's Irving. And it's Jordan in at the center, locking down the middle. And for Miami. Butler and Olenek, the forward duo. Trogic and Waiters, they're the backcourt. And it's Adebayo in at the five. And so off the tip, it's Brooklyn. And here is Irving. Pass to Allen. Shoots over Trogic. That's good from Allen on the assist by Irving. We're in the back half of the season. And Doris, some struggling teams looking now to reboot and reset for the stretch run. Yeah, I think there's one thing that comes into sharper focus is where you are in the season. Are you a playoff team and are you refining your habits and trying to build momentum for the most important spot? Or are you going to start to look at your young guys and give them a serious run to get NBA repetition? Usually coming out of All-Star break, Kev, things clarify for the individual teams. Here's Dinwiddie. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. It goes on Dion Waiters. You know, the size that Spencer Dinwiddie brings to the point guard position is a problem for defenders. So good at drawing contact. What we know unequivocally is Spencer Dinwiddie is far more than a terrific basketball player. Let's remember, he scored 1,400 on his SATs. His mom was a professor at USC. And there's something very special about being raised in an academic environment. And here's Brooklyn. Here's Kate. Hammer it home! Hammer it home, baby! <laughs> that is authority right there. It was. Wow. <laughs> Not a fast start here for the Heat. Six-point game. They just couldn't come out on top last time they took on the Nets. That one was played in Brooklyn. Well, if they want to avoid the outcome of that first meeting, they'll need to be stronger on the glass. They were completely outmatched in the last one. Well, you have to believe the coaching staff made that a point of emphasis. Better aggressiveness, better intensity on the backboards. No good from Irving. Boy, if you're going up against this guy in this close a range, you've got to defend with everything you've got. A tremendous job defensively. 
now here's Dragic. He had a 12 point outing in their last game against Dallas. Gets it to go. That one good from Autobio. Wow, they finally get it to go down on their fourth try. Irving surveying the floor. A three pointer is right on target. Boy, Kyrie Irving shoots it with such extraordinary confidence, regardless of where he is on the court. This guy is one of the most dynamic scorers in the league. Now here's Butler. Taking a look at his stats, he's averaging around nine and a half points a game. Waiters outside. Five to shoot. Passes it to Autobio. Here's Butler. He can't get it to go. And Brooklyn will come the other way. Credit the defense right there. They have not allowed this guy to get going at all in this period. Here's Irving. Nice concentration to hit the double clutch layup. Irving's got five. Yeah, they're going to have a nice little run here. Now about three minutes gone in the first quarter. And it's Dragic with the ball for the Heat. They trail by nine points. The dish to Butler. Over Durant. And Durant sends it back. Boy, the long arms of Kevin Durant twice on the pipes. Irving drives in to the paint. Dinwiddie passes to Allen. Durant against Butler. It's Durant on the wing. He's coming off a 28-point game against Atlanta. Yeah, don't forget uh, how great he was drawing contact and getting himself to the free-throw line. Picked up a ton of easy points there. And you can't help but pick their defense apart. They're completely in disarray. And Miami calls their first time out of the game. The Nets had to be so judicious and so smart with every move they made because they did not have top draft selections. So you have to use cap space to acquire picks. They had to find sleepers in the draft. They had to find players who were probably undervalued and then develop those players. This is an organization that used every tool at their disposal. And here's Winslow. After the three-pointer from Katie. Hangs home the trifecta. And they don't want to get in a habit of giving him open looks from three. First quarter still, but not who you want to leave open. And it's Irving missing. And Doris, the Nets showed they could manufacture a rebuild. Kevin, what the Nets did was not easy. But to me, it shows you exactly how critical quality front office personnel is to the success of an organization. And the Nets were on point throughout the process. And we've got an update here, so let's check in with David Aldridge reporting from the sideline. Well, Kevin, I did speak with head coach Eric Spolstra. Going up against the still imposing presence of DeAndre Jordan, the coach said he's one of the all-time athletes at the center position, right near the top as far as game dunkers, too. Kevin, they're trying to deny him deep position. Good luck. Back to you. All right, David, thanks. Here's Irving after Darren Collison's bucket. A nice shot by Irving. Oh, no defense right there for that shot from Irving. Release so quick, especially off the pass. Collison dishes to Butler. Left side, Collison. Back to Butler. Over Irving. Jordan with the rebound. This has not been a good period for this guy. Out of sync, not letting the game come to him. He's got to settle down and make shots. Irving from long range. But they get it back. Jordan the pass to Prince. Over Butler. And no good. Trying to use the glass. Just doing the job on the backboard. Outside Leonard in the corner. Collison with it. That's good, and it's Leonard with the assist. Collison's got five points so far. Well, this is where, over time, Darren Collison has gone from a decent threat from beyond the arc to a lethal one. And it's Justice Winslow with the foul. That's his first foul. What a performance for Kyrie Irving. He has been the story for the Brooklyn Nets. He notched eight points in the quarter and has that terrific basketball instinct on display. And we'll be right back after this.
Marquee matchup tonight. Jimmy Butler says he loves to go up against the best. I'm one that if you're the best in the world, I want to see it. And That's the hardworking mentality Butler provides, a two-way threat, Greg, who wants to dominate the top players at his position. And, and Butler has really embraced being a leader. You can tell he lives for these types of matchups and games. And hope you've enjoyed the broadcast so far, halfway through the first half in this one. And guys, what stands out to you from the Nets in this one? I love their effort, contesting shots, trying to intimidate here early on. Well, as a shooter, when the ball is sent back in your direction enough times, it can certainly have an impact on your mind. So for Brooklyn now, Irving and Lavert are at the one and two. Joe Harris is out there with Wilson Chandler, and it's Jordan in at the center. And Brooklyn making a change here. Dinwiddie's checked in. Miami shooting their first free throw tonight. And the free throw, no good. And you look at Jimmy Butler. He was about 6'8", about 230 pounds. Uh, great, great size on the wing. And he keeps himself in tip-top shape. His strength, one thing I'm not sure the casual fan even recognizes. That one's good, and the Brooklyn lead is cut down to just one on the basket from James Johnson. If you make a mistake against Jimmy Butler, this guy will find a way to make you pay. Pretty pass. Well, nine times out of ten, that probably is a miss, but somehow he finds a way. Winslow finds Leonard. Launches a three, and it's Winslow that time on the assist by Collison. Winslow's got the game tied up here for Miami. Harris looking it over. Here's the three. Right side, Jordan. Over Leonard. He's now one for two with that bucket. When you think that this guy was so raw and so skinny coming into the league, now DeAndre Jordan brushing off these challenges with ease. And the Heat call time here. In addition to going over the game plan and making whatever necessary adjustments have to be made, Greg, this time out also the time for players to get rehydrated or hydrate for the first time with some Gatorade. Plenty of basketball still to be played here, and they have to get recharged. That's a great point. Without proper hydration, a player can completely run out of gas down the stretch of a, of a game, and that's something that none of these guys can afford to have happen. If you're going to battle all the way to the finish, you have got to be hydrated. Here's Dragic. Following the basket by DeAndre Jordan. Down to five on the shot clock. Dragic, and he drops it in from the low post. Dragic has got his first two points of the night. Well, you get exactly what you want right there. Clean look right at the cup. Nicely done. Tinwitty drives in. Uses the glass to finish the layup. And the Nets lead by two. Well, when Spencer Dinwiddie puts his head down and goes to the contact, he is unafraid and fearless. Chandler against Waiters. And foul on the shot, so he'll get a chance at the line. That one on Chandler. Doris, you played, you've coached, you've broadcast, you've done it all in this business. Uh, how did you like to be coached when you were a player at the very top of your game? Yeah, I think one of my favorite things were coaches who challenged me, those who would not allow me to accept the level I was currently at, those who wanted to push me and extend and expand my game. Listen, every player wants to be respected. Every player wants to feel valued. But the great ones to me, the LeBron James, the Kevin Durant, they want to be coached hard. They want you to push them to the greatest possible level they're capable of. It's great insight. And it's sent back by Allen. Here's Durant. And the layup's good off the glass. And it's a six-point Nets lead. Well, at six foot nine, Kevin Durant has made himself a sensational ball handler. How about the ability to break down the defense there? Now here's Waiters. Looking at his numbers, he's averaging about uh, six and a half points a game. Okay, well, let's check in with David Aldridge, who's reporting from the sideline. Well, Kevin, Jimmy Butler has made several all-star teams, but he remains single-minded in pursuit of his bigger goal. Butler said, I just want to win a championship. That's all that matters. I didn't do it in high school. I didn't do it in college. 
I don't win it here, then I'll go to the 50 and over league someday. But I gotta win a championship at some stage. Kevin? I like that attitude. Thank you, DA. Offensively, it's been a perfect quarter for him. He hasn't missed a single shot. Some changes for Brooklyn. Prince has checked in for Chandler. And Irving subbed in for Joe Harris. Spencer Dinwiddie, one of those players that seems to have improved with every passing season. And his numbers back that up. This guy just keeps getting better. Now here's Waiters. Comes up empty from 19 feet out. And, the, and they're controlling the boards, Kevin. That's plus five in that category. Irving's shot is good. The handles, the burst, almost impossible to stay in front of Kyrie on the drive. Rogic with it. Taking a look at his stance, he's averaging around seven and a half points a game. Peters for three. The rebound by the Nets. They are coming off that win against Atlanta. Well, on the road, you don't expect to look so comfortable on the offensive end, but that was the story of the game. It came down to execution. No wasted possessions, and that is absolutely essential trying to win on the road. And if you look at this first half, overall, they've just had the better shot selection. And I think, obviously, we see the execution and the willingness to make the next pass so important. Bobbed up there for KD. Stolen by Waiters. Oh, and a fast break for the Heat. Rockage has got the ball. The feed now to Waiters. That's in coming off an assist from Rockage. Great chemistry between two teammates. Love the passing. And the Nets with possession. They're on a 17-7 run. Irving against Dragic. Had a hand on it. Okay, Kelly Olenek getting up high for that rejection. At seven feet, that length comes in handy. Waiters finds Dragic. Dinwiddie against Waiters. On the wing, Winslow. Shot clock at five. Allen. Winslow's shot is off. Now Irving. Now here's Durant. It could go. He oh. beat the buzzer. <laughs> Delivery at the buzzer. That is beautifully done. Oh. That's a miracle. Are, are you kidding me? Listen, under duress of the end of the period, you just throw it up and hope. And so it's Brooklyn. 13 points up at the end of the period. And their ability to get points in the paint has made all the difference in this one. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Thanks a lot. Kyrie, what was your plan for tonight? I was trying to get assists in the beginning, and um, I'm just having a good time out here. Got it going a little bit. Enjoying myself. Okay, Kyrie, we'll see you in the second half. Thanks a lot. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David, and we'll be right back after halftime to start the third quarter. See you in just a bit. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Brooklyn found themselves in a close game in the first. At the end of one, they were able to end up with a five-point lead. The second quarter got a lot more exciting for them as they were putting up big numbers and find themselves way out in front here at the half. Let's start with you, Shaq. What'd you think about the Nets? Some great work from them with the three ball. They came in with the idea that they could attack this D from long range. They were rotating the ball on the perimeter and letting it fly. Ah, 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 and they got a good look. It's a strategy that paid off with a barrage of threes. That's my barrage sound, Ernie. Kenny, what'd you think about Miami? Well, I think their problem is rebounding, Ernie. You know, when you're trying to come back in a game, every possession counts because each possession can turn into points, and you need to cut that deficit quickly. And that's a wrap. With the third quarter approaching, we now send you back to Kevin and the crew. And after a very lopsided first half, 
We'll see if things play out a little more evenly here in the second. You have to like what we're seeing from Spencer Dinwiddie. Man, he's been running wild on him through that first half. Absolute dynamite on offense. Boy, he has been shouldering the load. Aggressive, skilled, talented, and thus far unstoppable. The Heat trail by 13. And now let's check out the lineups courtesy of Gatorade all fueled up and ready to go for the second half of basketball. On the floor for Miami. Filling out the wings, it's Waiters and Butler. In the middle, it's Olinick and Adebayo. And it's Dragic in at the one spot. And hard to decide which was better, the pass, the catch, or the slam. Uh, there's no wrong answer. Sens <laughs> sensational alley -oop. Sometimes what was once considered a negative becomes a positive. For example, tweeners are now looked at as very valuable assets and very versatile assets. Yeah, Kev, no doubt. That, like, think about how much the game has changed for players like Draymond Green, who was so integral to the success of the Golden State Warriors. Here was a young guy who was considered at one point coming out of college with a power forward and center spot, too small to play the position. But as the NBA has downsized, as it's gotten smaller and faster. Draymond Green can be as important as any other player on a roster. Terrific play call to give him a clean look at the rim. That's how you want to start the second half. Well, there is nothing better than catching a rhythm as early as possible. And boy, that's a terrific start right there. How about the quick jump from Kevin Durant? He was impressive on that one. And about a minute of action so far in the third quarter. Dragic looking for an opening. Pass to Waiters. The kick out to Dragic, and it's a defensive three-second violation. And with this summer signing of Jimmy Butler, the Miami Heat demonstrating they still can lure star talent to South Beach. The, the Heat back on the rise. The Butler signing sets the stage for the summer of 2021 when they should have the cap space to sign another max player. Here's what Miami's going with right now. Myers Leonard, he's checked in for Otto Bayer. Johnson comes in for Olin. And it's Collison in for Goran Dragic. And they've got a big lead, not just on the scoreboard, but really in the rebounding numbers as well. And he gets contact and the whistle on the shot. Two shots coming up. And the foul goes against Miami. Earning a trip to the line, Karis Levert is one tough guy. Has had to fight through so many leg injuries over the course of his career. Incredible. Wilson Chandler's checked in for Jared Allen. Here's Collison. And again, it's the Heat missing. Not sure what, what the D was doing there. Clearly a breakdown. You can ill afford to give a guy like him that good a look. Kevin Durant on a prototypical KD roll. My man is going. And the Heat call time here. Boy, you talk about the all-time great below-the-rim finishers. Kyrie Irving is on that list. He can use either hand. So much English. This guy is tough. Joe Harris has checked in for the Nets. And here's a look at the stats for Butler. His last 10 games, he's averaging 11 points a game, two rebounds, and two assists. And he brings it for them every game on the offensive end. Well, I think you can tell he relishes this role, being the catalyst on the offensive end, night in and night out. And here's Harris from the arc. Here's Jordan out to Chandler. There's the pass to Irving. From deep, stolen by Collison. And there's the call on Chandler. That'll be his second foul of the game. Second half of play with just under two and a half minutes gone. Collison, the pass to Butler. Shoots the three. That falls. Great assist by Darren Collison. Six points for Jimmy Butler. Ina Doris, as great a score as he is. Kyrie Irving doesn't draw a ton of fouls. Kevin, I think that has everything to do with his elusivity. This is a young man who can finish with either hand, can get separation on any defender. This is the one thing you'd say about Kyrie Irving. He does not initiate contact around the rim. They're doing work here in the second half. Three or four to start. Master Waiters. 
with the shot. They get the rebound. Second chance shot. And it's Leonard missing. And a big lead for them on both the scoreboard and the backboard thus far. Irving dishes to Chandler. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. And until their playoff run, the Brooklyn Nets weren't a team we thought of as a free agent destination. And, and Doris, you almost forget that they play in the biggest market in the country. And Greg, who would have thought that in New York and Los Angeles, arguably the most competent franchises would be the Nets and the Clippers. These are two of the historically dilapidated teams no longer content to play second fiddle in those major markets. Justice Winslow, he's checked in for the Heat. Collison kicks to Winslow. He dishes it to Butler. Puts it up from 17. Brooklyn with the rebound. I'll tell you, no matter what he does, he can't find his rhythm, and you get the sense he's starting to press a little bit. Irving with it. He's against Collison. And DeAndre Jordan throws it down. Well, we've seen this one or two times, have we not? DeAndre Jordan finishing end of the alley-oop. Nice. And here's Collison, who will bring it up for the Miami Heat. Left side, Leonard. Will it go? And the bucket is good from Butler in deep. Butler's got six in the quarter. I mean, this guy reads situations so well, and he knows how to execute. Butler with the steal. In transition, here comes Miami. Collison, good. Collison's got seven points. Well, this is where Collison can really thrive. In transition, this guy is so phenomenally quick that he's a problem. Here's Chandler. That's good. And it's Levert with the assist. Well, overall, they're the team getting the better looks here in this second half. And I think what's happening is they're getting their shots within the flow of their offense, and you can clearly see the difference. Winslow finds Butler. And there's another one for the Heat. That's their third straight make off an assist. Irving against Collison. Irving passes to Chandler. Now here's Irving. Tight defense on him. Back to Jordan. Hangs in the air. He can't get that one. And the Heat going the other way now. We've got 33 seconds left in the third quarter. Here's Collison. Great tee that time from Irving. I'll tell you, a rough quarter for him, and that puts so much pressure on the guys around him. A putback. He hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. And the Nets lead by 18. Well, Karis LeVert giving you a glimpse into how high that vertical goes. That is nice. Here's Collison. Inslow wide open. He fires. And again, Miami with the triple. Just four seconds left to play here in the third. And a deep three from Irving. And here at the end of the third quarter, it's a double-digit ball game. Nets lead by 15. Back after this from the American Airlines Arena. As we head into the fourth, we'll see if there's a comeback in the works or if it's more of the same from the first three quarters. Nets leading by 15. So for Brooklyn now, on the perimeter, Harris and Prince. Durant plays the four with Allen at center. And it's Dinwiddie in at the point guard position. Now here's Dinwiddie. Gets it to go from beyond the arc. Dinwiddie's got the first points up on the board here in the fourth for the Nets. Butler up.
up top, guarded by Harris. And it's sent back by Allen. Wow, Jared Allen twice on the pipe. Send it back, young sir. Durant against Butler. KD's shot is good. And with the lead, I like the strategy here. Continue to get the ball to guys who can do something with it. One thing we've learned in the NBA, the game is never over. So you've got to continue to score, continue to build your lead. Butler. And it's sent back by Allen. Get back, get back. A finish. And Kevin Durant with the slam. Okay, Jared Allen, we see you making that look for a big man. That's a pretty pass. We're just over a minute into this final quarter of play. Pass to Butler. Doris, basketball continues to gain in popularity around the world, doesn't it? It's amazing to me. It does. Adam Silver, the commissioner, has said, I believe we can be the number one spot in the world. Obviously, they'd have to overcome the soccer, and that's popularity. But think about this, Kevin, how inclusive a game basketball is. And the love spans across gender, race, ethnicity, religious affiliation. And the best part about the game of basketball is this, Kevin. When you're growing up and trying to get better, you need a ball, you need a hoop, and you need you, and you don't need anything else. That is so well said. And here's Dragic after Torrey and Prince hitting the three. And the call will be against Harris. That is his first foul of the game. Dion Waiters checked in for Miami. We're about two minutes into the fourth quarter in this one. There's the double team with Allen. And the ball's tied up, so we'll have a jump ball. So it's Brooklyn now. The Nets on offense. They're on a 10-2 run here. Here now is Dinwiddie. Kicks it to Allen. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. Impeccable from the line since halftime. Well, think about Mr. Jared Allen. He was not the first family member to get picked in the NBA draft. Let's remember his dad taken by Dallas in the famous 1985 draft. His dad, however, would go on to have a playing career in Europe. Raiders no luck. And he did everything he could to make that shot as difficult as possible. We call that a great contest. You know this is something he brings to the table, the ability to anchor your defense. And over two and a half minutes in the books here in the fourth. Doris, all right, this is going to come out of the blue here, but if you had to choose between raising the height of the basket or widening the floor, or even widening the lane, which would it be? I have very strong feelings on this, Kevin, and I, for me, it would be widening the floor. And the reason I say that is, it feels to me in the last couple of years, there are more sideline violations where teams are turning it over because they're trying to get to that corner three, one of the most advantageous, best shots in today's game but because that three-point line is so close to the sideline out of bounds we're seeing too many violations so if I had to choose between one or the other I would absolutely widen the floor a nice shot by Winslow for a sliver of room that's all he needed to get to the bucket nice aggressive move slipping and sliding his way through now here's Irving Outside, KD. And there's the three-second call, this one on the defense. Of course, in basketball, like many sports, you can call some kind of penalty on almost every play. So with that in mind, where do we draw that line? I would say that most coaches and most players would say, as long as there's consistency with officiating, they can adapt to the way the game is being called. As fans, as broadcasters, what we want to see, we want to see the game remain free-flowing, fluid, pretty, the ability to move and cut and not be impeded in your progress. That's what I want to see. And we see that most nights. No doubt. That's good from Hero. Carew just checked in for Kevin Durant. And good on the second, so he makes them both. Of course, here's something kind of interesting. There's been a lot of talk about moving the draft to after free agency. What would that look like? 
Well, I think talent is always going to be at a premium. So I would think if there's a, a guy that's the absolute definitive number one pick, he's going number one regardless of roster construction. But the reality is it might help those teams who maybe if they know who's on the roster, it might change the kind of draft selection they would make. So it's an interesting supposition. Uh, we'll see if the NBA moves in that direction. Here's Leonard, following the basket by Kyrie Irving. Akpala, the pass to Nunn. Rebounded by Temple. Listen, that's a shot he can make, but obviously the defense okay letting him shoot it. Well, guys, this was never really a contest. Just a total obliteration, if you will. And you can safely say mission accomplished now for the Nets. The sheer volume of three-pointers was the deciding factor tonight at C. Yeah, they, they sink one and, and then do it again, and that strategy did work. And the effort here tonight, adding to the W column for the season, it'll go down as their 48th win. And they've really had a dominant run of games against this opponent this year. They played them three times and won every one. And you know, when you look at the huge impact he had, just a monster game for Kevin Durant. This guy has been shot making all night long. He commands the rock and takes over. It's the Nets now following the score by Miami. There's 39 seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. Six to shoot. Irving passes to Claxton. Out of bounds. Miami takes possession. Listen, turnovers happen. You've got to move on to the next play. Here's Miami now. Pass to Hero. 19 seconds left in the fourth. Here's none. Covered by Irving. Outside, Jones. Here's Akpala. Kept alive. Leonard the pass to Hero. Here's none. And so it's Brooklyn easily grabbing this one. This one was over well before the final buzzer. The fans were waiting for something to get excited about, Greg, but they never got it. They David, thank you as always. And that'll wrap it up, folks. For Greg Anthony, Doris Burke, and David Aldridge, and the rest of our terrific crew, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. See you next time.